Hi, boys and girls. Let's continue our math journey. Put your math hats on and let's go. Today, we are going to be talking about the different ways that you can represent data, okay? So here, a class collected data about who likes carrots. And this is what they found out. Seven of their classmates likes, like carrots. 12 students do not like carrots. And so here, they show the data by writing their names on a chart. So here, if you liked carrots, their names are here. Seven classmates like carrots. The students who do not like carrots wrote their name here. And there's 12 of those students. They counted the number of names in each group and wrote that number on the chart. Then they wrote an equation to show that the number of people in each group equaled the total number of people who answered the survey. Seven plus 12 equals 19. So 19 students in all were surveyed, okay? Let's check out another way that they represented their data. Ways to represent data. Then the class represented the data in different ways. They used pictures to show the data. Seven students like carrots. 12 students do not like carrots. So here, they decided to represent their data here using smiley faces. Here, they used an actual picture of carrots. Let's check out the other way that they represented their data. They also showed the data using check marks. We put a check mark for everyone that liked carrots. Then we put a check mark for everyone that didn't like carrots. We made 19 check marks in all. What is the same about these representations? What is different? So what is the same? What's the same is that the number didn't change, whether you used smiley faces or pictures of carrots. The number doesn't change. Seven likes carrots, seven like carrots here. 12 students do not like carrots with the smiley faces. 12 students do not like carrots here. So even though you may use a different way to represent the data, the data never changes. So I asked my colleagues, the teachers that I work with, what if they liked chocolate? Just a simple yes or no. So I'm gonna show you the data that I collected from my colleagues. So I'll show you what I came up with here. So I simply asked, do you like chocolate? And here I started off with the chart, a column, two column chart. And I put yes and no. So you can see here that three teachers, yes, they do like chocolate. Myself, Mrs. Middleton and Mrs. Seaton. You look over here in the no column, Two teachers do not like chocolate, Mr. Feltz and Ms. Kildall. Notice my math equation is the three that like chocolate plus the two who do not like chocolate equals the five people that were surveyed in all. Let's check out another way that I represented my data. Here, I decided to use smiley faces or sad face. My data didn't change. Still three yeses, still two no's. So whichever way you represent your data, it's okay, your data doesn't change. So what you are going to do, your assignment today, is that you are going to ask your family members, do you like chocolate? And you are going to represent your data in one of these ways. And you are going to take a picture, and send it to your teacher. So that way we can see your survey and how you represented the data, okay? So, I know you guys can do it. You can come back, you can look at my data again, you can see what I did, the different options, the different choices, and then you can make your own data. Now you don't have to use the same question of do you like chocolate? Maybe you have your own question you want to ask your family members, and that's fine too, okay? So, math petitions. Your activity tonight 
is to ask your family members a question. It can be the, do you like chocolate question? Or you can come up with your very own question and collect your data and represent your data. Okay, bye first graders. You can do this. Can't wait to see your work.